The second thing, it was demonstrated by one of the people who, who said, you know, this gentleman there, talked about you know, going to the protest of the Pope rally. If I may say so, this, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't there, I didn't approve of the protest, because there were various things around that I think are complete guff. One of them is the fact that people love saying they went to the protest of the Pope thing. I, you know, the, the, the Pope, you know, the, 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 the sort of, you know, Pope's not, not, not on board with gay marriage. You know, I'm a gay man, I'd love to have gay marriage uh, uh, approved by the Catholic Church. But, you know, they're not going to. Meantime, I really, really wish that people would reserve their eye for the people who don't just want to stop me marrying, but want to throw me off a cliff. Much much better way to spend your time but of course people love it because they think oh i'll attack the islamists but then to be allowing allow myself to do that i can attack the pope to show i'm not a racist show me a monsignor grab me a cardinal and i and i can attack them because that will allow me this is left-wing nonsense again pedophile priests you said you know if you just stood there and said you know i mean i'm trying to protect to protect muslims from pedophile imams people go oh, how islamophobic and it actually in that case it probably would be but you say paedophile priests and smear the Catholic priesthood and it's not a problem. A thirdly, finally, getting toward the end, a lot of this problem comes down and the, thing, the, the question we didn't get on to tonight, the, 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 the fact is this, at the end of the Second World War, the Nazi leaders were tried and executed. At the end of the Cold War, it didn't happen. One of the biggest problems we have is the fact that it wasn't resolved. The people who did, who did the largest massacres, the largest number of deaths caused by any movement in history were not brought to trial. It's thought of as Guardian, the leading left-wing newspaper, had Richard Gott, one of its editors, a paid member of the KGB, a paid KGB agent who said, oh, it was just a bit of a laugh. Oh, and it still is just a bit of a laugh. Because if it's communism, it's a bit of a laugh. 70 million dead here and there, a bit of a laugh. Uh, 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 and so on. So please, let's adjust our fucking values. Um, and finally, and finally, uh, this is the, a lot of this is a simple mental breakdown of the left. I hesitate to say this in the presence of Nick Cohen, who's charted, chronicled this better than anyone. But the mental breakdown of the left, the fact that at so-called left-wing meetings, we have the obsessions with Palestine, for instance. There was one recently, again, I saw gays for Palestine. Give me a break. If gays for Palestine were in Palestine, they'd have to move to Israel. <laughs> the, the, just don't fall for this rubbish. And don't fall for it when it's coming from the right or the far right. And don't fall for it when it's coming from the left or the far left. Have some decency. I'd first of all say absolutely not to do with our actions abroad, but put that in with one rider. If it were the case that because of our foreign policy people think they have the right to blow up people going to nightclubs and to blow up those fleeing from the first blast, as seems to be the case, then I'd say you have a choice in front of you. Much like the choice we had a few weeks ago over whether or not Britain and the British state has the right to decide who gets knighthoods or whether crowds in Pakistan who burn books they can't read have that right. And we have the same choice now which is whether or not British foreign policy will be run by the British government in the interests of the British state, which I think is the case, or whether or not we just allow other people who let off bombs here or in Baghdad or anyone else who want to terrorize us, whether we allow them to run our foreign policy. That's the choice before us. So what's your answer to the question? The, cause the answer of the is that the cause of the terror is Islamist fundamentalism, which is a version of Islam, a politicized version of Islam, which is wreaking havoc across the globe and has been doing so for many years, and which was aiming to uh, attack this country and our allies before the invasion of Iraq, before the invasion of Afghanistan, and indeed even before 9-11. That is the truth. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Tariq says that Europeans associate Islam with violence. There is some truth in that. There is also a very obvious reason for that, which is that Islam is associated with violence. It was not Buddhists who flew planes into the Twin Towers. It was not Hindus or Jews that blew up the London Underground buses a few years ago. And that simple fact has to be acknowledged if you're even going to start a dialogue. Now, the, what is happening... Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a pantomime. I'd uh, argue that Europe has done not too badly, considering the circumstances. In the middle of the last century, there was, or there was an almost negligible Muslim presence in Europe. At the turn of the 21st, in Western Europe alone, there were 15 to 17 million Muslims. That's a very fast migration, ladies and gentlemen, one of the fastest in human history. And no society would find it easy to deal with that kind of migration. As it happens, 
uh, European societies, Western European societies, have, I think, dealt with this much better than some would. Certainly, Muslims coming to live in Britain and in Western Europe enjoy more rights and better rights among them freedom of worship than they do in any Islamic country in the earth here today. We do have a problem. We have a problem when the failures of Islam throughout the world, the failures of all Islamic societies, come here into Britain. Their intolerance of freedom of conscience, their intolerance of apostates, their intolerance of freedom of expression and freedom uh, of speech, their intolerance of minorities, other religious minorities, sexual minorities, their intolerance of gays, their dislike and distrust of half of the population, women, and many, many other things. And the call, what's more, and the call, what's more, for a parallel legal system within Britain and European societies. This is monstrous. No other group behaves like this, asks for parallel laws. This is a fundamental problem, and it's one we're going to have to deal with. It's a problem between a society Western Europe that believes that laws are based on reason and Islam that believes that they are based on revelation. Between these two ideas, I'm not sure there is very much compromise for Europe. It is not Europe that has let down its Muslims, but the Muslims of Europe that have let down Europe. This is not solely something which we have to say we can never reconcile. Of course we can reconcile this, but we need to be honest about it. We need to be frank about it, and we cannot avoid things just because they are unpleasant. And if there were one thing I would wish Muslims in Europe could learn today, as fast as possible, it would be this, that you have no right in this society not to be offended. You have no right to say that because you don't like something, you can commit violence or you would like something to be stopped or censored. You have no right to have more hate laws or hate crime laws or hate speech laws just to defend Islam. You have to realize, the Muslims of Europe have to realize, that a society in which even your deepest feelings can be trodden upon is the only society worth living in. And the sooner we can learn that, the sooner that Islam can learn that within Europe, the better. It is not Europe that has failed its Muslims. It is Islam that has failed Europe. I'd argue Islam has failed its Muslims. Thank you. Perpetrated 9-11 were not even fundamentalists at all, okay? At all. You guys oh, make this are, connection uh, all of the time. Not. They were they not. Were, okay. They were more, they were more secular than most. Oh, come on. Then, then how, you guys don't how, even how know the you, history of the people of the keep, hijackers. How, 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 of the majority of the hijackers. Okay, but how can you keep speaking, let alone hosting a show, and know so little? How can you know so little and keep on talking? What? The, the 9-11 hijackers what? weren't fundamentalists? N not in the way that you're talking about the burqa. No Hang way. Well, I look at the, have the, you, look have you where missed they well came from. Well that was more of a political act to well commit noted. terrorism. Well it wasn't out of religious belief. You should get to know your history what? of the people Babble. that attacked the Twin what? Towers. Babble. It's not Babel at all. What? Babel. You are trying to... I don't know where on earth you're coming from on this. No serious person can even keep on saying the nonsense you're coming out with. Well, the if you read the, the letters, read the letters the that they left, most Muslims wouldn't do that. Would, would read the letters that they wrote, oh, they wrote right, to their okay. girlfriends, they didn't invoke religious law. I mean, learn something about Islam before you say somebody's talking babble, yeah, like, okay? That's strikes, ridiculous. It strikes me, it strikes Absolutely me, ridiculous. It strikes me, that, it strikes me that you're speaking from a position of unique ignorance. I don't know, first of all, why it is you keep on using this term Islamophobia to attack all people who are criticizing fundamentalism. It's a quite cheap way to try to avoid an argument. And then you try to claim that people who fly planes into Twin Towers and the Pentagon and so on, and blow up people in my city for the crime of going on the subway are not fundamentalists. Just They're read not, the maybe facts not of their leaders. Maybe Just fundamentalists read. in the fact that they wanted to create terror, but it not necessarily out of religion, if you know the history of each one of those attackers. They're not, that's not the true at all. I, I, that is they very they ignorant. Point point you right, all right, let's go to Paris because we're running out of time. Example. Let's go to Paris because we're running out of time. I'm sorry, Douglas. Go and read the major texts on this and you'll learn. I, I, I learn. I know probably more than you'll ever forget. Go ahead. Well, it's a good, I wish you'd try to show oh, it. Okay, and I wish you'd try to show Elizabeth, it. Elizabeth, go ahead.
Professor Ramadan is doing um, is uh, the reverse side of what I hear a lot of conservative um, right-wing politicians doing now, which is effectively we just have to give them a lot of time. You tend now to hear the thing about people needing their own reformation, Islam being 600 years younger and all this kind of thing. I recently heard exactly the same thing as Mr. Uh, Professor Ramadan was saying, uttered by uh, Norman Lamont, um, Baron Lamont of Tehran. Um, and um, I'm not, I'm he, not said, uh, he don't, said don't during this, mouth he said during this, he said exactly the same thing. I mean, they need time. Tariq Ramadan said it's going to take time. How much time, ladies and gentlemen? I don't think we have time. And I would beg uh, Professor Ramadan to go around the Muslim world explaining to women in Saudi Arabia they can look forward to freedom in 600 years' time. And that gay people in the Muslim world can look forward to having their first meaningful so, relationship you know. six centuries from now. These are views that are not held or practiced in this country, but people that want to breach this Those hatred against... Those views are not held in this country. Well, let me just explain that. We've got people preaching a lot of hatred and poison against Muslims. Give me one case, even in Muslim countries, where they practice Sharia law, where they go as a routine. Hold on, hold on. In routine, most Muslim countries do not do the death penalty, they do not do the stoning, they do not do all these things. This is most Muslim countries that are supposed to run under Sharia well, law. Let me, um, let me... Some do, be but they are... It shouldn't be necessary to have to shoot this down, but let me do it. Sunni, Shia, two most important distinct distinctions within Islam. The most important Sunni state in the world, Saudi Arabia, executes people for being gay. The greatest friend of the, the UK. He crucifies people, beheads people and crucifies, recently sentenced to beheading and then crucifixion an underage young Shia man because of his familial connections with the Shia family that the Sunni house of Saudi Arabia didn't want to live. Then let's go to the other side then, to the Shia uh, uh, powers. The, the most important Shia country in the world Sa uh, uh, is Iran. Uh, in Iran, you get killed for being gay, you'll be stoned to death as a woman if you're an adulterer, or hanged from a crane if you're lucky. So please let's not have point. this stupid no, no, you've cover, missed the point. because we are you've cleverer than you think we point. are. Anyone you've in this country can one look country at the internet, they can read the articles, of countries. you cannot cover that over. It's fact, it's Will what's you? going on, it's what ISIS is currently trying to do in the territories that it controls. It doesn't come hold from on, nowhere, and if we're going to talk about Will extremism, a great deal, fact. let me finish this point, the, a great deal would be improved in this country. Country. If people like you came into studios like this and admitted that there is a problem yeah. and admitted that you wanted to join in finding a solution to that problem instead of trying to pretend that the problem doesn't exist. <laughs> but let me just pick up on a very important point that this raises. You see, if an Anglican or somebody carrying out, somebody saying they were speaking in the name of Anglican Christianity, today in the street beheaded somebody in the name of the Christian God and we came on this program a week from now do you think that there would be a single Anglican Christian in the country who would not say it's